Hi there, it's Doug, and uh, well, it's been a while. I thought I'd film something new. I uh, have been studying hard for uh, an exam, and I just took that exam, and uh, maybe this will help you out a little bit from what I got on. Uh, now, I will say that even though I have a pretty good idea of how Lewis acids and bases work, if you don't read the problem, it doesn't matter how much you know. <laughs> I, uh, I worked out an entire problem exactly right on the paper, and I circled the exact wrong answer don't ever do that. It's a bad idea. It's not good for your grade. So anyway, all I'm saying is watch this, take what you can, and uh, if I make a mistake, please kindly correct me in the comments and I'll tweak it and make a note. Somebody's already done that and I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, so anyway, Lewis acids and bases. Uh, to understand this piece, uh, what you should probably already know would be uh, what's an Arrhenius acid. An Arrhenius acid is just a proton donor in a solution and an aqueous solution, or an aqueous, I don't know, it depends on who's saying it, I guess. There are also Bronsted-Lowry acids. This is the one that killed me on the uh, test because I didn't read it. I thought L for Lewis and went from there. Anyway, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a little broader definition than a Lewis acid. It's a proton donor, so it doesn't have to be in an aqueous solution. And uh, so that brings us to what are Lewis acids. Well, a common example of a Lewis acid would be like a boron trifluoride. Now, if you've uh, done Lewis diagrams, it's the same guy, okay? And you could calculate out, you know, how many electrons belong on each one of these fluorides, and you'd see that there are two empty spaces over here. That's going to be important because when you put it together with something like this, like this ammonia molecule, ammonia has a couple extra left over. Now. <coughs> The one on the left, we'd call a Lewis acid because it accepts electrons. But a Lewis base has electrons to give. Now that might be a little bit confusing because if you've been dealing with things like, uh, you know, your Bronsted-Lowry and your Arrhenius acids, you would think, oh, the thing that gives is the acid, but that's not the case, and that'll make you get the answer wrong on Lewis acids and bases. So there are some general rules to follow uh, with. Uh, with Lewis acids and bases. In general, cations will be uh, will be acids. Polar molecules will also be acids. Anions will be base. Lone pair, it's a base. In fact, we just talked about that, right? And if it's neutral, like s certain salts and things like that, then it's not an acid or a base. It's just, well, it's neutral. Okay, so uh, to make it a little bit easier to remember, I like to think, oh, I forgot to put this in here. So Lewis acid needs electrons. Lewis base has electrons. And if molecules were like little zombies, it would work kind of like this. Over here, you'd have your little zombie. Here, let's move down so we can see him better. And... Uh, little zombie here, you know, something's missing, something's not quite right with zombie one, and well, zombie two over here, zombie two knows what he needs, and they get together, and they become a happy little zombie couple, Aww, isn't that cute, <laughs> okay, and uh, that's it, so the acid is the one that needed the electrons, or eyeballs, I guess, and the base is the one that had some eyeballs to spare. And you know, zombies always have extra eyeballs sitting around, so that's bound to be right. Hope that helped. Talk to you later. Bye.